Hello, and welcome to Exposition, a podcast produced by the Division of Social and Human Sciences, Northeast Campus, Tarrant County College. Prepare to be engaged, enlightened, and informed. Today's topic. Today's topic, we are going to discuss the movie Amistad. I am your host, I guess, <laughs> Dr. Karen Wisely from the Northeast Campus History Department. And I'm Samantha Elkins, also from the Northeast Campus History Department. All right. When we start, I like to read the log line or brief dis- description and then give you a, a kind of a recap of who's in it and what you probably also know them from. Um, This is mainly for how my brain works, but if it helps you, I hope it does. The log line for Amistad is this. In 19... er, (laughs) Hey, maybe we can cut this part out. (laughs) The log line or brief description for Amistad is this. In 1839, the revolt of Mende captives aboard a Spanish-owned slave ship causes a major controversy in the United States when the ship is captured off the coast of Long Island. The courts must decide whether the Mende are slaves or legally free. Amistad was released in 1997. It was directed by Steven Spielberg, and it stars Jaman Hansu, who you may recognize from Gardens of the Galaxies movies, or... Even, I think he was in Captain Marvel for a hot minute. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, Matthew McConaughey, who is famous for being a professor at University of Texas in Austin. <laughs> of course, he's acted in a few movies as well. Just um, a couple. Yeah. Including <laughs> Dallas Buyers Club, for which he won an Academy Award. And my personal favorite, Dazed and Confused, where he coined the phrase... All right, all right, all right. It's Gosh. not for Magic Mike. I know some of the younger folks probably think <laughs> it is, but he was actually parodying, parodying himself uh, in Magic Mike. Um, Anthony Hopkins, or Sir Anthony Hopkins, mm-hmm. um, is uh, probably best known as Hannibal Lecter in Silence of the Lambs, which is super creepy. And Chiwetel Ejiofor, who was nominated for an Oscar for 12 Years a Slave. Finally, Morgan Freeman, the voice of God, which is not an exaggeration. He literally voiced God in a couple of movies, including Evan Almighty and Bruce Almighty. He's also in The Shawshank Redemption and about a million other movies, including our next one, which is Glory. All right. (laughs) That's enough for the reading, I guess. Um, All right, so uh, overall impression of this film, um, I would say, I mean, it's a very um, gut-wrenching film. Um, There's a lot of um, raw emotion um, in here. There's a lot of of scenes that might uh, affect you. Um, And overall, probably... Um, the story is, I mean, it, it is based on real events. It is perhaps um, skewed a little bit by uh, the perspective of it. Um, and, uh, you know, we can, we can talk about that. What, what were your overall first impressions? Oh, man. Just like you said, it was, there, there were two scenes in particular, which I guess this goes without saying, but spoilers. Um, yes, <laughs> if you're obviously. listening to this. Spoiler alerts. <laughs> As always, yes. Um, The opening scene and then the middle passage scene, the two scenes that actually do the the best job in the movie that focus on the enslaved peoples who are fighting for their freedom now. Um, And honestly, they have the best focus in the whole movie because the rest of the movie, like you said, kind of gets a little lost with you get the whole white hero coming in, saving the day and... Yeah. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. And and the, you know, insane focus on court cases which are so <laughs> stimulating. It's, you know, who, yeah. Um yeah, but yes, you're right. The two the two scenes. Let's 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 break them down a little bit. Oh yeah. So the opening scene uh covers this um what is it 
would we call it a mutiny or a revolt or or what is what is the correct wording oh, here? Oh gosh, Cause <laughs> it's not it, it's not a mutiny because they're fighting for their freedom. Yeah, and they and they aren't like people who work on the ship because I think you have to yeah. be like it's whenever the lesser uh, sailors. I think we can just them. say it's it's a, a slave revolt? revolt. Okay, a slave revolt um, occurring on this ship. And it is, I mean, it's a, it starts very dark. Like you can't really make out a lot of, you know, figures. There's movement. You can tell it, yeah. but you can't really see what's happening. There's his, his heavy breathing. Yeah, he's, and, and you can only see, like, it's all dark. And, like, he's trying to pull this nail up from the ground. And mm-hmm. you can just see a little bit of red with the blood yeah. kind of off of his fingers. and. Yeah. It's very vivid um, mm-hmm. filmmaking, so congratulations, Mr. Spielberg. <laughs> I think uh, think that guy might be going somewhere. Um, uh, so yeah, it, it's it is very vivid, and then uh, I know I know you said the 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 sword. Oh gosh. <laughs> okay. So like. I, the first whole scene, I was like with it. I, I, I remember I started to watch it one day and I went, nope, I'm not in the right mood to watch this. And I had to just pause it and walk away. And I came back like three days later. But <laughs> then, so you have to be in the right mindset. So if you start watching yeah. the movie and you're like, no, I'm not in the right mindset, it kind of, you know, from the get go. Yeah. Um, but then I will say like, so it like, opens up and they're fighting for their freedom and it's really inspiring and everything like that. But then I will say there's this scene that he kills one of the guy's on the ship and he stabs him through with a sword and then he slowly pulls the sword back out and there's a yeah. lot of blood. A and lot of blood, yes. That's the only part of the whole <laughs> slave revolt that I was like, yeah, this is a little like cheesy in this moment. But besides that, it's really done well. And I think a lot of it was more trying to once again do that whole juxtaposition with like all the black and brown and yeah. not color and then you have the bright the dark red and it, yeah yeah that yeah it's 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 great composition great filmography i mm-hmm. guess we would say um uh, cinematography sorry ah, um, there we go yeah there's the word um <laughs> anyway uh yeah and and it is very um gut-wrenching it is very yeah. emotional um you know you don't quite yet know what's going on but then you know when daylight comes um and you see these these folks and they are um yelling at each other and there's no um there's <laughs> there's there's no captioning there's no, <laughs> you, you have no idea what they're saying and you're like what is going on um and and it is it's it's very off-putting because you have um the the people who revolted, the mm-hmm. the Africans who revolted, and then you have the Spaniards who are running the ship, who are still mm-hmm. there's still some alive who are supposed to be um, navigating the ship, and they they close caption the Spanish, but they don't the Mende, and it's 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 a weird. little shocking, yeah, because yeah. yeah. because you from that first scene, like you're right on the side of the Africans, mm-hmm. like it's very clear, like showing that struggle of good versus evil kind of thing like that to put it in black and white terms and everything. But then it's kind of like, but then you don't know what your heroes are saying, so to speak. And so it is, it is a little off putting. I wish they had done some captions because I would have really liked to have known actually. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was a little uh, stunning with that. But then Mm -hmm. of course, um, I think they are trying from from gestures, from looking up at the sky and the stars and things <laughs> like this, um, I think we we're supposed to take from it that they they want them to sail them back to Africa, mm-hmm. but the Spaniards are trying to trick them mm-hmm. and and take them further on. I guess in hopes that they can um, salvage making money off of it. Um, so it ends up they end up off the coast of Long Island, mm-hmm. um, and they are captured, and um, and then it becomes this court drama. <laughs> <laughs> With all the focus suddenly Just, on yeah. the white savior complex yeah. versus the so, people yeah. we were like, yeah. yeah. So we have, like, heart-pumping, <laughs> really gripping, emotional action, and then now we're in a court drama. So it's, you know, just, I mean, there is drama, but slightly less, um, you know, emotional, gut-wrenching kind of raw uh, feelings there. So um, 
Matthew McConaughey um, <laughs> plays a, I can't remember his first name, oh, it's Baldwin. Uh, it's Roger a, Baldwin. Roger Baldwin. And um, he is uh, a lawyer. And um, uh, they are trying to find someone to, uh, they being um, Morgan Freeman and uh, I don't know who else was. It was uh, <laughs> Toppin. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but I don't know the actor's, <laughs> yeah, I don't name, know at the all, actor's like, yeah. name at all. So we're we're going <laughs> half and half. Toppin. I don't remember Morgan Freeman's name in the movie. To be fair, Morgan Freeman, uh, his character is completely made up in the movie. Like, there's so many yes. things about this movie that are so accurate, like that opening scene, and then uh-huh. we'll talk about a different scene later. Yeah. Um, but then there's like a few things that are just completely not at all accurate Mm -hmm. and i don't think some of them are problematic per se no it it isn't it isn't problematic Mm -hmm. it just it's it's not i mean and 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 in in many films based on real movies or real (laughs) real movies (laughs) (laughs) that's a little freudian (laughs) uh, many films that are based on true uh happenings is that they often add a fake person in there mm-hmm. because then they can manipulate that person oh, yeah. to be able to see all the things that they need to see to tell the story. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I get that. Um, I think the only thing that is, and it's not really problematic. It's just, you know, it's just inaccurate uh, <laughs> as far as Morgan Freeman's character goes is Morgan Freeman, obviously a black man um, in yes, in the North in the long Island, mm-hmm. but he moves about with absolute freedom, which would not no. have been the case even in Long Island um, in the 1830s, 1840s. Yeah, and well, and there's something about that the ship originally it was found off the coast of New York, but they purposely towed it into Connecticut because slavery technically was still legal in New York, even though we were seeing it, you know, phased mm-hmm. out and everything by that point, especially. Uh-huh. And so, like, the fact that the movie skips over that, which, like, uh, that's not a problem. Yeah, I don't mind that. Yeah, yeah. But the fact that Morgan Freeman, a black man, is just walking around, mm-hmm. doesn't seem to face any adversity. Yeah. He walks right into the courtroom. Yeah. He sits right next to um, that Toppin. <laughs> <laughs> right? A rich white yeah. dude. <laughs> so not separately, I guess, is what we're trying to say. And he, you know, walks into people's homes. Yeah. And, you know, there's and he is greeted, you know, just like it's a normal thing, and mm-hmm. that would not have been the case. No, it, it definitely tried to make it clear that, like, oh, the North had ended slavery mm-hmm. and, like, was opposed to slavery, and it's like, eh, it's not really the case at this point in time. Like, they're moving towards that, but... Yeah. 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 There's, I mean, yeah, there's still... There's still racism. Oh man, <laughs> you know, even, the abolitionists were some of the even, most racist people. There, yes, so. even without slavery, <laughs> there's racism, and the fact that that was nowhere apparent in mm-hmm. this in this movie, and and we start off in I guess it's Connecticut, and then we move. I mean, later we're going to be in Washington D.C. with the mm-hmm. Supreme Court, and he is still. Right there in the Sitting courtroom. right there in the courtroom <laughs> with all of the, you know, the white lawyers and everything. And it's like, I mean. And that certainly wouldn't have happened, especially with, like, so one thing that's, they make out this kind of overarching idea throughout the entire film that, like, people are racist at the beginning of the film and oppose them. And then they, like, hear the Mende story and their background. And suddenly now they're like, oh, I'm truly an abolitionist. I've changed my mind. And it's like, uh, that's not really what happened with this mm-hmm. case. No, no, um, no. Because it wasn't a case truly about the issue of slavery. No. It was a case that was about the Atlantic slave trade. Mm-hmm. And... By 1839, the Atlantic slave trade had been banned in the United States. Mm -hmm. So, uh, again, spoiler alert, the ending ending that we get with the Mende being declared as free men may not have happened if the United States was still participating in the Atlantic slave trade. So it isn't it isn't a it isn't a, a a. it's not really an African American movie. In many ways, it's an African movie mm-hmm. and a white American movie, mm-hmm. legally speaking. Yeah, yeah, 
Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Way to make that clear. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, the Matthew McConaughey takes this course, mm-hmm. uh, this case, and he is um, he is kind of depicted as I think you called him like a used car sales or the ambulance <laughs> they call chaser. Call him an right? ambulance chaser in one review online, yeah. and I thought that was the best description of him yeah. at the beginning. Yeah. And it, it was. It was a little frustrating because then when I looked up some stuff afterwards and Roger Baldwin, who he's playing, is actually like a supreme abolitionist mm-hmm. who very much was part of this case from the beginning was right. like, no, let's fight for their freedom yeah. and their rights. <laughs> and like, yeah. And instead they yeah. depict him as, oh, I, I'll i take it. But this is this I is all money. about property <laughs> and, <laughs> you know, not about, you know, your rights or your freedom or anything. It's property. And whose property are you? And, and all of this kind of yeah. thing. And it's like. And he has to be convinced later, of course, by Anthony Hopkins. Of course. Like, but have you talked to the men? Have you, like, <laughs> spoken to them? And it's like, yeah, I, I think he would have done that. I, a, I, hope, I hope he would so. have. I mean, uh, I don't know how you prepare a case without it, but yeah. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. So then um, that's where we get Chewetel. Um I, I know I just said Chewetel. Yeah, that's it. It's it's always like the emphasis on the wrong syllable for me. Chuotel, uh, a GF4, who is the interpreter, um, mm-hmm. who will then help them um, communicate with the Mende, um, because apparently Steven Spielberg made a conscious choice not to caption the yeah. Mende. So uh, we have to wait until everybody else who is trying to talk to them. <laughs> Um, has a, an interpreter who is is uh, a geophor uh, mm-hmm. who is um, before we understand anything that they're saying, and so that is um, that is enlightening because then we get the second really great oh, yeah. scene um, in this movie, and that is um, it's that is the um, depiction of the Middle Passage, yeah. and it's probably I think one of the most historically accurate and gut-wrenching scenes I have ever witnessed in my life. Yeah, and it is, um, you know, from the from the start, from him being grabbed away from his family. Oh, gosh, yeah. Um, beaten, chained together, um, traded, uh, and, then, and then shoved on this ship with hundreds of others. Mm-hmm. And the, the conditions that they had to deal with, um, the the treatment that they have to endure, um, everything, um, the tight quarters, everything is is as you know f- the most accurate that that we've had anything yeah. um, res- in, in regarding the middle passage. So it is. They do not shy away from the reality. Um, no. They don't shy away from the violence. Yeah. And the anger, but also the breaking of spirits to yeah. a certain extent. Yeah. And um, and I think that um, if you haven't seen this movie yet, and mm-hmm. and you are hanging in here listening <laughs> to all the spoilers that we're giving you, um, if you if you intend to watch this movie, um, there should be some sort of trigger warning because the, it does yes. depict um, extreme violence and it does depict uh, rape. Yeah. Um, so it is. Um, it is very it emotionally raw, gut wrenching. I, I don't know any yeah. more words to describe it. I I, uh, I was a sobbing, heaving yeah. mess. There you go. Um, so I uh, was watching the film and I decided for some I don't know unknown reason. Um, if you if you know me, I have uh, three boys. I have a three year old right now and two eighteen month old twins. And I decided to watch this movie on the twins' 18-month anniversary, birthday, whatever. <laughs> and so I just put him to bed, and I was like, oh, I'll watch Amistad. And then I get to this scene, and there's a baby. And the baby's not born, but they're trying to, like, rescue the baby from being basically, like, suffocated by all these bodies being piled on top of well, each other. Didn't and she give birth, though? I think I she think gives she, birth yeah, she on gave the birth. ship. Yeah. And then it's also, like, the mother basically, spoilers, dies in, like, childbirth and yeah. everything. And so yeah. someone else is now Taking holding the baby to it. Yeah. hold it and everything. Yeah. And they had to, like, and they pass, pass it, it over across all of these, um, I think, the men to yeah. get it to a woman who could... 
yeah, take care of it. And, yeah. so, and oh my gosh, watching that scene, I, it, it was just, I couldn't like think because it just like, I was being all, oh, I'm such a mother today. And then like <laughs> yeah. watching that, like I was breaking down and then making it worse or better. I don't know. The next scene you literally have um, the woman who's holding the baby is sitting on the side of the ship and they're watching a punishment. Like, and you're yeah. seeing someone is being whipped, whipped. brutally, brutally. Yes. And um, she just sits on the side of the ship and then falls backwards yeah, leans and backwards into the ocean and commit suicide that way with yeah, the baby with and the baby. i i oh man i uh yeah i i literally paused the movie after that and i had to walk away for like five minutes mm -hmm. before i could come back but it's also one of those things that like i, I talk about in history classes this is that what happened. people did this is and seeing it is mm -hmm. i mean like i said they don't pull their punches or mm -hmm. anything and i think yeah. that's so important yeah to really understand just how terrible it was mm -hmm. and everything. Mm -hmm. But it is a really, really good scene. <laughs> I'm not trying to put I mean, you it's off probably the, the best scene in the whole oh, yeah. um, movie because it is it's him telling the story and you seeing mm -hmm. the realities. And uh, I mean uh, it is probably the best scene in the whole uh, in the whole movie. I really wish um, that had been the climax because they do that within the courtroom mm -hmm. the second time they do the case. Yeah. And yes, and, and that was it, it. Really, was the most I think gut wrenching scene, and yeah, it felt like the climax to me. Yeah. And then after that became just a yeah. legal battle. And yeah, and then we had to go to the Supreme Court and uh, Sir Anthony Hopkins <laughs> as um, John former Quincy. president John Quincy Adams <laughs> is going to give a. A rousing speech. Yes, a very heartwarming and, uh, yeah, about freedom and what would the founders do and, um, <laughs> you know. He, he well, learns from the Mende, first of all, and which is crazy in that, like, once again, like, this is, like, some of the historical inaccuracies. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, I'm going to talk to the Mende as if they were my equals, and he invites them into his house and everything. And it's like, yeah, no, no there's no way John Quincy Adams would have done any of that. No, <laughs> no. Not even, you know, and, and, and again, northern yeah. politicians, yeah. certainly, but, and and maybe, like, maybe morally opposed to slavery, I don't know, but he is, he certainly is no abolitionist. No, he refused to take the term um, abolitionist. He was, we see John Quincy Adams has kind of a weird record on abolitionist rights and stuff like that, because he was bas basically for freedom of speech, which included talking about slavery, and therefore he opposed things like the gag rule that was like, hey, we're not going to talk about slavery. We're going to ignore that problem until it doesn't go away. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and it's so, like, in the movie, they don't want to, like, make him out to be that person. They still mm -hmm. want to make him out to be the abolitionist. Yeah. And so, once again, him, like every single other character, it seems like, is commenced over the course of the movie that they must fight for these people's freedom based off of freedom and not just, like, legal rights. But at the end of the day, it came down to just legal, Le legal proceedings rights. and yeah. rights yeah. with property. And, and, of course, the the judgment mm -hmm. from the Supreme Court is delivered by Roger B. Taney, yeah. a notorious man who's in favor of rights, Right? No, that was sarcasm, <laughs> oh, by the way. Yeah. Um, he is, uh, this This case happened in, uh, I think it finished in 1841. Mm -hmm. uh, 1841, 1842. Yeah. Um, and um, just uh, 15 years later, in 1857, uh, Roger B. Tani will, of course, preside over another rather important case um, mm -hmm. that... Um, you know, he is a dirt ball. Um, <laughs> that and that's putting it lightly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I want to read the thing, the Dred Scott uh, oh, yeah. thing, that where he says, um, the black man has no rights that the white man is bound to respect. That is the same guy who they treat as, like, the heroic chief justice who is going to recognize the rights of these men day. Which I wonder now... Thinking about that, like we you brought up earlier about like, oh, if we had been still part of the African slave trade, if these two cases were reversed on like chronological order mm -hmm. and he had said that first, mm -hmm. even looking at this as like a property rights case, I don't think he would have freed these African men. 
by any means because I think at that point he would have been defining them as like they can't have rights, period. Even after that rousing speech by John Quincy Adams? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, we got to go back to this Uh-oh. speech. John Quincy Adams' <laughs> speech that is the climax of the film. And in modern day society, maybe it didn't fall as flat in 1997, but today it definitely was like, yeah. wait, what? <laughs> Because he has this speech because he's inspired by the Mende about, oh, you must turn to your ancestors when the odds are against you. So he basically says, like, what would our forefathers do? And he names, and I I wrote it down because I was like, okay. He says, James Madison, Hamilton, Benjamin Franklin, Jefferson, Washington. Like, what would they have done? And I'm like, dude, most of these guys either owned slaves or we're involved in the slave trade, so maybe we shouldn't be asking. <laughs> maybe <what? laughs> those aren't the right ancestors to be like, asking. Like yeah. What? Yeah, and of course he ends. Oh yeah, he ends standing with this. next to <laughs> the bust of his father. <laughs> he was Adams, and to be fair, mm-hmm. Adams, like, okay, mm-hmm. I can see, like, oh, your father, who very much did not own slaves, mm-hmm. and I wouldn't say was an abolitionist mm-hmm. by any means, but no. definitely was anti-slavery. Abigail Adams famously was anti-slavery. So it's kind of like, okay, that one I get. (laughs) But but the rest, a little checkered past there. Yeah, like, I don't know where you're going with this, dude. (laughs) (laughs) It was was very emotional, however. Um, Oh, and I looked it up, and it turns out, (laughs) in his real speech before the Supreme Court, it was apparently an eight-hour speech oh my in God. front of the Supreme Court. So I will take this movie over that, I will say. Yeah. So. I mean, at two and a half hours, it was already pretty long. <laughs> Man. Yeah. Wow. They knew how to give speeches back then, didn't they? <laughs> oh, my Lord. Um, I bet the Supreme Court at that point was just like, yeah, sure. Property yeah, rights. <laughs> Sacked out, sleeping, yeah, snoring. Just like John Quincy Adams at the beginning (laughs) of the film. (laughs) Uh, All right, now that we've spoiled the entire thing. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Oh, except for to say, there is is the, like, postscript where it shows them uh, returning the Mende. I don't know, we're still... like we're still oh, okay. Um, there is a postscript where it looks like um, um, I don't know. I don't know what the heck's going on. Um, well, if we didn't get it, it's here. It's fine. oh, good. Okay, there it's fine. Go. So it's fine. there's a postscript <laughs> with the Mende at the. Yes. Are you saying at the end? A postscript where the Mende are returned to their homes in Africa, except, unfortunately. For our main character, Jamal Hansu, um, his village is gone. Yeah. And his family is nowhere to be found. And that is another, I mean, like, talk about leaving on an emotional em- yeah. emptiness there. Um, that was that was not a good feeling. So it, it isn't, like, maybe it isn't an uplifting, happy movie. Maybe... Maybe make sure that you're in a good place when you're watching this movie. It, it's like it has this hopeful moment because, you know, they got their freedom mm-hmm. and everything like that. Although they try to play it off more like abolitionists looking at rights when it really came down to property and slave trade and that stuff more than anything else. But then, yeah, you have this ending and you're like, oh, he's going home and... <laughs> He's going to be reunited and... With his wife and his son that you saw him mm-hmm. being, like, snatched away from in, in, in the middle there. Yeah. Yeah. No, it was it was yeah. not uh, not a happy ending, so... Um. And to be fair, that's probably pretty historically accurate <laughs> for especially uh, these individuals. Yeah. But. No. but you know how I feel. I feel like... Do- Gosh darn it, <laughs> Stevens! <laughs> Give us something. <laughs> Hollywood this thing up a little bit for crying out loud. We've already, you know, we've already included characters that don't exist. We've, we've, you know, fudged a little bit around the edges of, you know, racism and all of that. Yeah. Give us a damn happy ending, please, for the love of God. Or even um, if they had like made it where like, oh, he doesn't reunite with his family, but others uh, did, or yeah, something. Give us yeah. some sort of like, yeah. Some sort of conclusion, but yeah, um, yeah. Um, all right. So, 
Would you recommend this movie? <laughs> <laughs> I, I would highly recommend, especially the first, like, three-fourths of it, like, through Middle Passage and everything, knowing that it's going to have a little bit of white savior complex and all that. But I think the scenes that focus especially on the Mende and their struggle and their background, those... It doesn't get more real, I put in quotation marks, than that. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I really, I, I think that that alone makes it so worth watching. What about you? Yeah, um, I, I think um, if, if I could figure out a way to show that middle passage scene oh, to my classes, yeah. I would. Because, again, it's the, it's, that is the magic of movies, is that it can show you in a scene that is, I don't know, five minutes I could talk for a whole hour and a half mm -hmm. and never really convey um, the kind of emotional rawness that is in that scene. So I would I would like to show that to my classes so that they understand what the middle passage is. Um, oh, yeah. So yeah, I would recommend it. Um, I I mean I don't I I don't know anybody that's like this is my favorite Spielberg movie or anything <laughs> like that. But I mean it's a it's a good movie. It's not a terrible movie. It's not you will not regret the two hours yeah. and thirty five minutes that you spend watching it. It hasn't aged badly or yeah. anything like that. Really, like it, it's 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 a movie of nineteen ninety seven, and I'd say it still holds true to that and yeah. not anything crazy. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so overall, yeah. I'd say. Yeah, thumbs up. I don't. I don't know. Do we want to? Do we, do we want up? a rating we system? Start, oh gosh, no, that's too difficult. We'll we'll just say we we'll we'll just just recommend. Say, I recommend. This. <laughs> <laughs> I recommend some parts of this <laughs> more than other parts. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, definitely. All right, all right. Well, then that's gonna do it for us. Thanks for stopping by. Bye.